If you're watching these videos as they come out, last week I talked about MIDI controllers and how they can make it really easy to control your lighting. Well, this week I want to take a look at this guy right here, the Elgato Stream Deck. Because this little device here has come to us from the world of gaming. But this isn't all fun and games. In fact, the Stream Deck features all of these keys. There's three rows of five each for 15 keys, and they make a smaller and a bigger version. And the great cool thing about it is the keys have customizable LCD buttons. <gasps> Look at that. And that means that if we can control lighting with these, this thing and other software, we can have an awesome, customizable, multi-page, super cool button controller for like a hundred bucks? Maybe a little more? How crazy is that? That's right, these things retail, uh, I think, somewhere between 100 and 150 bucks. Sometimes they're on sale, sometimes they're not. I got this one used, but regardless, this is a cool device, and I want to go in this video and dive in to how to actually use this with lighting and other show control applications, because how awesome would it be if you could be maybe in a church dedicating some of these buttons to lighting and others to other control applications that you're using? Maybe you're someone who does video production and you need to control some video things and some lighting things. Maybe you're going to control some audio cues and some lighting as, a, as an AV person. I don't know. But regardless, these things are cool. They're less expensive than I've ever seen something similar to this before. And they're darn fun. So let's dive in and take a look at how to make this work. All right. So I've got this stream deck. I've got it out of the box. It's ready to go. I've got it plugged in. And the first application that I have up, I'm going to show you three today is the Elgato Stream Deck program. This is the one from the manufacturer. And the reason why I want to show three applications is because there's really some different ways to come at this. And depending on exactly what you want to use this device for, what you're trying to control and how you're looking to use it, a different program may make sense for you. So we're going to look at three today. The first, as I mentioned, is the Elgato Stream Deck, um, you know, configuration program that comes with it that's from the manufacturer. Then we have a program called Companion, which is built for the show control industry um, for controlling audiovisual things. And then we have Show Cockpit, which you might be familiar as a lighting centric program that also works with some video programs and is used for doing various show control things. And a lot of people use it for MIDI controllers. Uh, each of these programs has a unique way of working with the Stream Deck. And each of them has their pros and cons. And so that's why I'm going to walk through all three of them here this morning. So I've got my Stream Deck program open here. And we can see that I've also got Onyx open. I'm going to use Onyx as my example, but other programs will work with these. I will make sure to highlight that within this video. The, the, the possibilities are really pretty endless. So the Stream Deck program, pros and cons. Well, first off, um, how do we make it work with Onyx? So it works with Onyx by using the keyboard shortcuts. And if you go to support.obsidiancontrol.com, go to the user manual, type in keyboard shortcuts, you will see a whole listing of keyboard shortcuts that work in Onyx. Okay. And then we can begin applying them to the Stream Deck. So this was the first program I used. And you can see here, I've got group at full through and clear, and then groups one through five that have a different icon. Working with this program is really simple. You just go ahead to the side here. You find the option you want. So for me, I used hot key a lot. You drag it over, at which point you can title it. You can click to assign. Let's assign the space bar. And then you can change the name as needed. You can also go ahead and set an icon or create an icon um, on a website. And so pretty cool that you can change all that up, have it look however you want. And as you saw, right as I configure things in the software, it shows up immediately on the Stream Deck that's plugged in. So, you know, it's pretty simple to go in here and just do some hotkeys, like group is control G in Onyx. And then that's going to take me to, to group. Let me clear out my command line. Clear. 
All right, so we can see here that as I actually press these buttons, for example, these group toggles, it will actually go ahead and select my various groups here, which is pretty cool. And I can clear, I can select a different group, then I can go ahead, maybe I take them at full, doing this all via the stream deck. And so with this particular example, this was the first I was thinking through, let me just clear everything. I wanted to go ahead and kind of make this a companion for the M touch, which you might be able to see the NX touch as it's now called um, behind here, but just kind of wanted to put some of those buttons on it that in Onyx, I can only get to via the command keypad and also some shortcuts for the groups, really simple, really easy, but really powerful because then if I'm in a different window, like my 2d plan or my playback buttons, I can go ahead. I could just, you know, press my group number. Boom. Now I've selected that group. I can work with it. I can grab some presets, whatever, ready to go. Okay, so the um, to conclude basically this first control program, the Stream Deck software itself is really pretty robust. It's pretty good. It's The downside is that it's not show control specific. So it only works with the hotkey commands and the multi commands. And if your program that you're using, just like Onyx, does a good job of implementing hotkeys, then... This might be all you need. And in fact, I like it a lot because I have these different profiles in here and they launch when different programs are in view on my computer. So this isn't just for show control, but then I can launch my video editing program, have completely different keys on here. I can launch um, my music, pause my music. I do that in my default profile. And so a lot of great options there. So it, it's kind of cool if you're, if the hotkeys do everything you need, then this program is really good for general use. But let's hop over now to the program called Companion. So I'm actually going to exit out of this and also close it from my taskbar. There's a little window that comes up um, that you can disable. And um, I am having to reboot in between each time I use one of these programs. Um, in theory, you should be able to close out the one program, open the other, and it should work fine. But I'm finding that multiple programs with the Stream Deck aren't really the way you want to do things. Um, I would advise once you decide what program you want to use, uninstall the rest of them and just run that program on your computer and you'll be great. Um, so this is Companion and Companion is a little more techy, a little more developer-y. And so for somebody like me, who's not a developer type, it does take more to configure. So I got the program up, I launched the GUI and then over here, I've got it in a web browser. And so, I just want to walk you through the basic setup. Um, there's a lot in here. So I just launch it and I go add by category or add by manufacturer. So if I go to category and I go to lighting, for example, there's a number of consoles in here. There's AVO, CAMSYS, ETC, Grand MA, HOG, and Onyx. And the benefit of Companion is that it actually connects to consoles and to other devices via network. So you can control and this is especially true in the video and audio world, you can control different consoles, different hardware devices, all sorts of different things from one computer. The different applications don't all have to be running on that single computer. You can actually do a lot um, on that computer as a whole. So what uh, to get Onyx set up, I actually have to go into Onyx and use the Onyx Manager software, which is in the menu here. And then once that loads, um, you press continue or it will auto continue and you have to turn on the telnet server. Now I don't really know what that means, but it's how over the network and I'm on the same computer here. So it doesn't have to be over a network, but it's how Onyx is able to connect to companion. So I go to setup from the menu. I went over to net remote. I went to telnet. I enabled it and then it just worked. So that was good because I honestly don't really understand how to configure that. Um, it's a little overly technical for me, but we got it running. So once we have them connected, I can actually refresh this here now that I've launched that Telnet. And I should see if I go into edit here, we'll just double check, make sure our IP is good, press apply. And we should see that it's happy. Of course, I'm just getting errors left and right, um, which has been an issue with this program. Again, you know, Companion's not the most user friendly. Oh, my problem is I closed the Onyx manager. That was me. Um, sometimes these errors just pop up, and I think if you were a developer, you'd understand how they work, but I don't have a clue. And so 
go back here into edit, press apply. And now we get an okay. Now we get a good status. So the real benefit of companion is that it is really powerful. And for example, if I go to a button here, like my first button, it uses a command in Onyx over the network. So it's not a hotkey. I don't have to have Onyx um, up. I don't have to be able to see Onyx. I can literally just use this hotkey, have it minimized, have it on another computer, have it as a console running, and I can control it from anywhere on the network through companion. So it's really powerful like that. The other powerful thing, and this is just a go on one of the queue lists, um, I can show you here, I'll press it. And, um, oh, I gotta set this queue list off of a submaster to a regular queue list. And then I literally press it, it goes, boom, nice and easy. So the fader's not up so you don't see anything, but there you go. So that's how, how it basically works. And what's really powerful in the companion setup is simply that if I have a different button, say this full release button, I can actually go ahead and set this to release all my lights or run a queue or something like that. And then at the same time, it reaches out to a Blackmagic ATEM and sets up a certain input as the preview source. So literally, the cool thing about this software is when I press this button, it releases everything, but it also fires a completely different set of equipment. And it puts, you know, maybe a video source or something else in the preview, and then the video person or myself just have to switch the switcher, but it has it already for us. So I think that's absurdly cool. Does Companion take more time to set up? Is it kind of confusing if you're not a developer? Yes, but you can learn it, you can figure it out, and hopefully this video thus far has given you an idea of that. The other cool thing is Companion works with pages by default. So you might see here, I've got a grid of four buttons wide, but really this unit's five button wide because the Companion app has pages. So all of a sudden I can have literally 99 different pages of things, of different macros, different keys, different commands to press, and I can get to them all really easily. It always shows me what page I'm on. And so you can really do a lot with this. I think, especially if you're somebody who uses the same gear all the time, or if you're a church or a club and you've got something installed, how cool is it that you could use this one program companion to set up your buttons, and be able to control looks in Onyx, be able to control looks in a video program. You can play audio, you can control a soundboard. There's so much that you can do in this program and it is really powerful. So now I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna close Companion up and let's go to show cockpit, okay? The, the Onyx favorite, um, you could say, because it was originally MPC Tools and it's been part of the Onyx family for a long time, so. I've closed Companion. Now we're gonna launch Show Cockpit. And I love this program a lot. Uh, it does do a good job with the Stream Deck, though I'll show you why it's probably not my choice. So I've got Onyx set up, I've got my Stream Deck set up here. Okay. And it's nice. As you can see, all of my, my groups here and my attributes that I've set up are all showing up on the buttons. I'm also going through Onyx and I'm selecting things. You probably see things happening. You see I'm firing looks there. Um, and then I can also fire some hotkeys on the bottom. So overall, very cool, very awesome. But it's a little bit more difficult to set up. So I would say if you're already using Show Cockpit for mini mapping, it's kind of a no brainer to use it. But if not, um, you know, I might use the regular Stream Deck program, honestly. Um, so take a look here. What all you do again is you bring in your elements just like anything else in show cockpit. If you're not familiar with that, check out other show cockpit videos. You go to the mapping page, at which point I've got all my buttons here. They're labeled by row and position, which is great. Um, I just go find something I want to assign. Boom, I click on a button. It assigns it. I'm gonna just kill that one though because I didn't mean to put that there. Once you've got everything assigned, and if you press any of the keys, it will highlight them so you can see what key it is. Once you assign all that stuff, you do have to go and label them. That was the downside to show cockpit, is these labels that are on the unit, 
and they didn't auto populate um which was you know i was kind of hoping but at the same time i know that that's a, a lot more difficult to happen for a third party program so i go back to elements now go to open window i've got my four different um types of buttons and uh, initialization is like the default if it's not set to do anything else then you can go in you can build your button okay so literally i build my button there and then it says literally just press a button to apply it so that's all i'm gonna do press a button it applied my button so pretty cool but a little bit odd to me or a little bit frustrating because i have to go back and forth between the mapping page I took a screenshot actually, and then the elements page, open the window, you know, do what you want to do and then press the button. Um, it's not quite as intuitive as I would have loved, but if you're already using show cockpit for other MIDI stuff, then it's probably a no brainer. Or if you want some of the commands in Onyx, like firing different faders, um, going to parameter groups, things that you can't do via the keyboard shortcuts in Onyx, then you know, this is a great example, a great way to set things up. And I would argue, too, that finding your different elements here in Show Cockpit, your different functions, and adding them to the Stream Deck is much more intuitive and um, easier than the Companion program. So, you know, they each have their ups and downs. That's my point here, and that's really what I want to drive home and share with you guys today, that these three programs are all helpful all useful to somebody for mapping a Stream Deck or a Stream Deck Mini or a Stream Deck XL to a lighting program. They all have uh, different abilities. They all have slightly different strengths and different weaknesses. And I think they're all useful. So I hope this demonstration has helped you to see that. I hope you'd enjoyed watching me map that and use it with lighting. In fact, I think it's so cool that we can live in a world where Devices like this are open for us to use and be able to use freely for not a lot of money. So if you enjoyed this, be sure to subscribe here, like this video, and write in your comments below as to what you want to see next on Learn Stage Lighting. I'm always looking at that stuff, and I will see you guys in our next video. Thanks.